Do you know which country is going to have the most people in the year 2100? And what impact could that have on the world, guys? We're going to talk about it. Let's take a look at projections of population growth. Andrew, in the year 2100, this is what this model has predicted. Number one, India. Number two, Nigeria coming in at near 800 million people. China drops all the way down to 730 million people. Then the US, Pakistan, Congo, Indonesia, Ethiopia, Egypt, in Tanzania. Whoa. Okay, so these are based on a lot of predictions, David, for the year 2100. We got to talk about it because kind of like this is one of the, you know, negative birth rates and migration and immigration is definitely one of the big topics in the on, on, on a lot of people's minds right now. So let's get into it. Yeah, check this out. World population peak. Top 10 countries by 2100. Andrew, there's a ton of different models. Look at how many people are shooting up and shooting down, Andrew. China might shrink by 500 million people in 75 years. Insane. So, David, we did a lot of research. Here are 11 trends that you should understand when it comes to to global population in the future. These are the trends that everybody's taking into consideration. Let's talk about them. Yeah, so make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, check out Smala Sauce and Amazon right now. Hopefully, it'll be available, Andrew, to the global population. Andrew, real quick, before we get into the list, take a look at the total fertility rates for six regions. Right now, I would say that Africa right now, Sub-Saharan Africa, is around 4.6. Mm. But everything by 2100 will drop down to around two child's uh, two children per household. Yep, yep. One thing to remember is that all birth rates in almost every country are starting to decline, but obviously some countries were way higher than others in the past 10 years. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Point number one, Andrew. Projections projections are incredibly difficult to get right, but are often in the proper ballpark because the trends are not just gonna like reverse all of a sudden. Right, so they're saying these predictions that we have right now and people are making these very smart guesstimations about the future, you're saying that usually because it's based on trends that are ongoing and trends don't just quite stop all of a sudden that they're probably gonna be kind of right. Yes, they're probably going to be right, but does it cannot account for weather, pandemics, war, politics, economics, major societal shifts. For example, Andrew, in 1994, the New York Times ran an article predicting that Vietnam's population right now would be 165 million, but right now it's around like 95 million. Right. So, th so they were right in the sense that Vietnam's population did grow a lot but just didn't grow at the rate they predicted. Yeah, and it seems like for the questions of like China, for example, or Japan and Korea and these countries with super low birth rates, it's almost like it almost makes more sense that the population will keep declining even faster than there is a major baby boom meaning that a whole bunch of people have babies. Yes, yes, yes. It's very difficult to reverse the uh, birth rate trends, but it's easier to change some, a high birth rate than reverse a low birth rate. Right. Um, however, some of the trends that are going to have Nigeria, Egypt, and Ethiopia, oh, Ethiopia's population skyrocketing, uh, there is a limit to industrialization. It's not necessarily a steady arc all the way up. So that is another thing. Uh, point number two, Andrew, projections sometimes change policy. For example, in China, they saw the projections that China was going to be super overcrowded. They were going to run into starvation. So they instituted the one child policy, but it almost worked so good. It worked too good. Right. So now they are left with a kind of an imbalance and that doesn't make it suitable for having kids. And I mean, there's a lot of other reasons why they're not having kids in China. Obviously they're not also having kids in Japan and Korea as well. And a lot of other cities, uh, a lot of other countries in the world. Right. So for example, Nigeria is on track to have 800 million in 75 years, but right now the Nigerian government is taking already some measures to curb that. Ooh, would Nigeria do like a one child policy? Probably not one child. That they seems might have to, to do extreme. like just a, a four-child policy. Right, right, right. Uh, point number three, Africa's population may not grow at this same rate that it has been. Yeah. Because obviously it's a, it's a tremendously high rate when you see it, right? Yeah, now. well, back in 1990, Nigeria, uh, its birth rate was like above six. That's six kids per family. That's a ton of people. And so that's why there was such a population boom since the 1990s. But uh, honestly, everywhere in the world... 
birth rates are starting to decline a little bit. It's just that Nigeria is declining slowly from six. So that means when it declines, it'll still be at like three or four. Right. Everybody's gliding down, but they're gliding down from a different jump off point. Right. Uh, point number four, Andrew, China's population is on track to potentially be halved. Man. So that's a lot of people crazy. are basically throwing out ideas what does that mean does it mean a lot does it mean a little because it certainly means something yeah i mean uh again man i don't think i don't know if it's something that you can panic for and i don't know if you can plan like some crazy baby boom and a whole bunch of people having a bunch of kids it seems unlikely it just seems that maybe you could slow the decline by making it easier to have kids uh having their setting up more systems for uh baby care or Hey, you just take the hit, and then in twenty year twenty one hundred, there's a lot less people. What do you think if the solution was to study for exams and test less, and that was the solution? Would they institute it? Yeah, I do think that you have to take off some of the pressure off some people so that they can have kids and focus on having kids, and then also help other people take care of their kids. Right. Some people, uh, there was a Chinese comment guy that said, uh, you know, I feel like only rich people and the government actually care. Your average person is looking forward to it because I guess everybody will have a higher quality of life potentially. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. These things are really difficult to predict. You guys let us know what you think in the comment section below. Point number five, Andrew. Some people theorize that population decline, major population decline may lead to war. Well, I feel like a lot of things lead to war, right? But what's You're saying the, overpopulation could lead to war too, right? But what's the theory on this? But basically, there's not enough puppets for the puppet masters. So there's too many puppet masters and not enough puppets because the global elite need to like, you know, own the companies and the companies need to employ people for like, you know, menial wages. So once that whole system collapses, they'll start fighting over resources. Interesting. Yes, yes, yes. Very interesting. I just think that AI and robotics is going to play a huge role into it. Point number six, Andrew. Sometimes the feeling of a population feeling crowded is just due to everybody wanting to live in one or two cities in a country. So, for example, um, America, Andrew, on a per capita basis, uh, like China has one fifth of the arable land that America has on a per capita basis. That yeah. means that even though China is slightly bigger than America, its arable land is way lower. That pushes that population into the cities. Right. Well, actually, in America, there's quite a lot of good land that still is not very populated. So if you think New York City or SF is crammed, it's just because you didn't move an hour outside of the city yet. Right, right. There's still arable land over there that's still uh, a frontier, I guess. Uh, some people are saying that the new ultra-high-speed trains that are being built under 500, 600 miles an hour will allow cities to feel more alleviated. Mm. So it depends. You know, there's the actual population density of a country and then how it feels. Sometimes it can feel even way more packed than it is. Uh, point number seven, there were countries like Bangladesh and the Philippines that were expected to have gigantic, gigantic population booms, but right now actually are not. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I had to look this up. And Bangladesh, they have a declining birth rate, although it's declining kind of slowly, but 1.3% each year. And hey, with the compound uh, negative interest, I mean, that's going to be going down pretty quickly. Right, a slight decline every year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bangladesh and the Philippines. And I think it's just because... You know, my theory is that, like, for all these countries where they had a big boom back in, like, the 90s, basically their countries came up, and then now a lot of them, those people who grew up in the 90s, are immigrating to other countries like America. And when they get here, whether you're from Nigeria, you're from the Philippines, you're from Bangladesh, when you get to America or the West, whether it's Australia, America, you're actually not going to have that many kids. Your birth rate's going to more mirror Americans, so maybe you'll have two or three kids at most. You're not having six kids in America. Right. Because, because it's, it's too hard just, it's too in expensive. America. It's too expensive in America. So it's funny because all these countries had big booms, and then those kids that grow up, they move just to have the same birth rate as the Native Americans. Right. You're saying it almost more assimilates to the culture that they're moving to. Exactly. Point number eight, Andrew, uh, immigration from colder countries to... I mean, from warmer countries to colder countries is going to be a huge thing due to equator uh, climate change. Mm. A lot of countries near the equator, some people predict, will become like so harsh climate-wise, they'll become unlivable. Right. Yeah, so that's going to be a big thing right now. Um, point number nine, 
there's gonna be a lot of modern technologies and techniques available for dry places to still try to stabilize their food or caloric sources so they can survive. That is new things such as drip irrigation, you know, carefully selecting diverse crops, desalination. Um, there's like algae farming, hydrogel soil. Basically, some people are saying that like other countries that are richer are going to need to stabilize poor countries with these new technologies unless they want mass immigration. Mm. Yeah, so that's an interesting point. Number 10, what do you do with these trends and predictions? For example, Andrew, Elon sees these predictions and he wants to build Mars colonies. Right. So I guess everybody's like looking at it. Some people are like, oh yeah, that's great. That's the future of the world. Other people are like, this is the end of the world. Elon, he wants to use this information to go to Mars. Mm. Um, and point number 11, Andrew, AI might just change all of this calculus. Oh. So people are saying that maybe uh, people are going to marry robots. People are gonna have robots take care of the elderly. That's going to stabilize populations where it's overly weighted on seniors versus young people. So the robots could have a big impact. Right. I feel like if you made me say AI is going to have a negative impact on birth rate, if anything, highly unlikely to me that people see robots and what robots are going to take care of your baby, really, if it's just AI. Like, how are the robots going to make parents want to have more kids? Is it really going to make it easier? Because you need caretakers for kids. So if the robots can't do what like a grandparent or auntie or uncle would do, then really they're not going to promote people having a lot of kids. Yeah. I do think, to an aside, men are more likely to marry a Blade Runner style uh, android or cyborg than a woman is to marry a male cyborg. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, men, some men out there are ready to marry those AI models off Instagram. If they can just be real enough. It was just like Blade Runner. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, anyway, guys, I think that my major takeaway is that I think we're entering a new cycle with AI. So potentially a lot of the models that held true for like 20, 30, 40 years, they possibly could be shifted. But AI and cyborgs and androids, they're not there yet. To like, so we can't really fully predict how it's going to stabilize everything. Right. But I think they're going to play a huge part. Yeah, but but who knows, man? Maybe the actual moving robots get implemented into our lives a lot slower than AI is. I think AI is already part of our lives to an extent, but I feel like the actual robots that can pick up a baby and rock it and feed the baby, that's not happening anytime soon. Right. Um, anyway, guys, let us know what you think of these population predictions in 2100, 75 years from now. Any thoughts? You know, I think it's really interesting because it does dictate on a very macro bird's eye view the way the world is headed. Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.